The Clayman Institute for Gender Research at Stanford University, creating a more equal society for women and men through data-driven research and public education. Well, what's interesting about the topic of women and gender in science is that we started at step one. Who are the great women scientists? Because no one in the late 1970s could name them. Madame Curie, who was the first human being to win two Nobel Prizes. Um, so the questions have developed and become more complicated. The first question was about women in science. The next question was about gender structure in science. The next question was about gender bias in science. Our new project, Gendered Innovations in Science, tries to move away from identifying bias to a more positive project of using gender as a resource to say, okay, if we really use all of the tools of gender analysis that have been developed over the past 25 years, what new knowledge can we create? The largest and most exciting innovation is the redefinition of heart disease disease to include women. Heart disease was always thought as a male disease. Men died young, it seemed tragic, but in fa and, it, and it is. But in fact, um, heart disease is the number one killer of women. And since the 1990s, when research has turned to focus specifically on women's cardiovascular disease, we've learned that the symptoms are different. Um, very often, women will call 911 and they won't it won't be recognized as a heart attack. This means that they get to the ER. There's a delay in getting them to the ER. And as you know, in this disease, every moment counts. So I think Gendered Innovations has had a real impact when looking at women's heart health. A second gendered innovation, which is really important here in Silicon Valley, is having to do with speech synthesis. Computers began to speak in the 1930s. The first talking machine, the first voice synthesized, was uh, previewed at the 1939 New York World's Fair. Machines did not speak female until the 1990s. Because the basic technological platforms were built for the male voice, it was very difficult, and researchers were kind of amazed, that it was difficult to reproduce uh, a good female voice. You can't just re-pitch the voice up two octaves and get a female voice. There are many subtle and important biological and cultural differences in human speech. So we now have, we now have this innovation, but the next step will be representing the great ethnic diversity and diversity across human languages in computer speech. Gendered innovations is not just about females, it's very important for males as well. Um, if you look, for instance, at research on osteoporosis, men do not suffer from osteoporosis as much as do women, but when they do, they don't fare as well as women. So if men live long enough, a third of them will have a pelvis break in their lifetime. And if they break their pelvis, they do not have good survival rates. So it's very important that we take a disease which has been defined as a female disease, re-establish um, the guidelines for recognizing that disease, and understand how it impacts men. While I've been director, we've grown the institute um, to include 160 faculty affiliates across Stanford's seven schools. I think that says it all. But we still need more research on women and gender. The issues are not finished, the problems have not disappeared, and there is much, much more to do.